this video will show you how to operate the clausius clapeyron equation where we are measuring vapor pressure, boiling points as a function of external pressure. This is the apparatus that we will be using. And there is a pump that will take it down to various sub-atmospheric pressures. We, uh, the atmosphere is about 101 kilopascals. Uh, this machine will get it down to about 30. And we will be boiling uh, liquids in here, measuring the temperature of that boiling, and measuring the pressure simultaneously. This is wrapped up in um, fiberglass tape to help preserve temperatures. So let's go to the board and look at uh, a schematic of this particular piece of apparatus. Here is a schematic of the clausius clapeyron uh, apparatus. The liquid will be in a boiler here. It has a resistance uh, tape heater with um, a vacuum uh, seal on it. There is a tap at the bottom. This is how you actually charge the boiler with liquid. You will fill the boiler to about here. The level of the liquid should be in the curve at the top of the boiler here. When you heat with this, the liquid will boil, and the liquid and vapor will travel up this vertical tube. It's called a cotrell pump or an ebulliometer. As it moves up here, the liquid and vapor come to equilibrium. You're actually going to measure a reasonably accurate uh, temperature, and it will spray onto a glass well in which we've got a thermometer. And so as it impinges on the thermometer, we will be able to measure the temperature. Vapor will go up here. We've got a water condenser that will cause any remaining vapor to condense, and liquid comes down. It all rejoins the boiler here. Now, this is all very well at room temperature, uh, room pressure, excuse me. We do have a pump that will evacuate the entire system. You need the main valve and the secondary valve to be open so that the pump has access all the way through to the boiler. The release valve here, which is open to the atmosphere, should be closed. You turn the pump on, um, and we drop the pressure down to as low as the pump can get. That's going to be about 30 kilopascals. And uh, you'll be able to tell what the pressure is because there's a manometer attached between the ebulliometer and the secondary valve. You turn the heat on, it will start to boil. You measure the boiling point at whatever the pressure is. Once you have measured that, you stop the heat, you turn the heater off, and you will have sh shut off the main valve. So the pump is no longer working, but this whole system is under reduced pressure. At this point, you open the release valve for just a second to let a little bit of air into the system. You will increase the pressure. You won't take it back up to atmospheric pressure, but you might take it from, say, 45 to 50 uh, kilopascals. Once you've got it at a slightly higher pressure, you turn the heater back on and measure the boiling point at that higher pressure. Once you've measured that, again, you shut down the heater, let a little bit more air in, increase the pressure, and measure the boiling point at whatever that pressure turns out to be. Eventually, you will get it up to room pressure, and so you just then shut this down, open the main valve, turn the pump back on, take everything back down to low pressure, and continue to measure the boiling point at different pressures until you've got about eight or 10 different pre um, boiling points at different pressures for your solvent. Let's go back to the actual apparatus and see what that looks like with real glassware and real solvents. Back at the actual glassware, when we're getting things started up, you need to plug all your apparatus in. It should be unplugged overnight, so I've done that already, and turn the condenser water on. So I've now got an actual flow going through my condenser, and there's the water coming out of the cooling end. Um, I'm going to fill this. I've got a beaker. This is actually methanol. You will be using other solvents from the yellow cupboard down at the end of the aisle. Shut this off and turn the pump on. 
when I've got the manometer on and open this to the system and close the reserve valve you'll notice the pressure is dropping 64 55 and the pressure inside the system is dropping now this is a pressure vessel so whenever you have got something other than atmospheric pressure in this apparatus you need to be present you can't walk away from it when it is under reduced pressure the other things to turn on is the thermometer which is battery operated so please make sure you turn it off before you leave and the thermocouple goes in at the top right there okay we're down to about 30.5 kilopascals and that's probably as good as I'm going to get so I'm going to shut off the main valve so the pump is now isolated from the system and I can turn it off the next thing I need to do is actually fill this and you do that by suction you put the tip of the tap inside and open the tap gently and you'll notice it starts aspirating that liquid inside And again, you want the liquid somewhere in the curve at the top here. Shut it off, put the liquid down underneath. We're now ready to start heating. This here is the rear stat that will control the heating. Don't go above seven amps, and there's an ammeter here that shows how much energy is going in. If I crank that up to about seven amps, you notice we're starting to get some boiling almost immediately. And it'll take a while before the actual system is boiling with enthusiasm. It's not going to take forever. And when it does, we will get bubbles and liquid moving up this ebulliometer or cartridge pump to spray onto the uh, thermometer. Because this is just a resistance heater, please make sure you do not turn it on unless there is solvent in here. If you turn it on when the chamber is full of air, all that's going to happen is you will fry the uh, heating element. It'll burn out, and we'll need to replace it. However, we do have solvent here, and we're now getting considerably more liquid going up there than before. This was at about 19 degrees, it's 24 and a bit, and this will start heating up considerably as the uh, boiling process brings the liquid all the way up. We've got this at about 31 degrees. And this doesn't seem like much, but remember, this is a reduced pressure. That probably is pretty close to the uh, vapor pressure, the boiling point, excuse me, of methanol at the appropriate pressure. So 33.9 at 56.8 kilopascals. At this point, we turn this down. And this is the release valve here. And open it, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. So counterclockwise for just a second you'll see the pressure going up I took it up to about 63 and then we turn the heat up again and it'll start boiling a lot faster this time because I'm not taking it from room temperature and again we'll measure the boiling point and you continue to do this until your pressure gets up to atmospheric at that point, again, turn the heat off, open this valve, pump down, and start again from about 30 degrees. You need to make sure that you have got between 8 and 10 total data points um, when you have boiled your solvent. Now, this will take two or three runs, but it's quite easy to do. And you, know, you will get it at whatever the 
uh, the pressure of the system happens to be, which is pretty random. But you want to make sure that you've got data points that scan from the low 30s all the way up to 100 for the boiling point of this particular solvent. Once you have done that, it's time to drain and move on to a second solvent. So the first thing you do is make sure that it's completely at atmospheric pressure. So I open this, make sure this is off, and open, whoops, I need a, diff a waste beaker here. Let's open this tap, and if, if this isn't open, it won't flow. You'll get gurgles and bubbles coming out. But you drain the boiler of whatever solvent you were using. Then you rinse it with whatever your second solvent is, and your TA will talk to you about the different solvents that you need to be using. So once you've drained it out, rinse up to about here with a second solvent, drain it out again, and then refill it properly, because you don't want a binary system in here. You want clean whatever your second solvent is. And the waste goes into the appropriate bottle, it will be sitting here labeled, and if you don't have a waste bottle, talk to a staff member, and we will get you one. Once you have finished this and gotten boiling points as a function of pressure, so you're collecting ordered pairs, pressure and boiling point for however many solvent your TA wants you to do, then it's time to shut down. Make sure that all your waste goes into the waste container, Everything goes off and unplugged. This goes off. Turn off the cooling water. And don't forget to turn off the thermometer. And leave the apparatus open to the atmosphere so that it can be dry for the next user. And that is how you use the Clausius Clapeyron boiling point at reduced pressure system.